Hi guys! Vex here. This video is dedicated to Nick, one of my patrons. If you like the idea of being able to request a video topic from me, swing by my Patreon page, link down below, and check it out. Today we're talking about lava and water in video games. It's a topic that's close to home, as water and lava make frequent appearances in my custom Minecraft maps. Okay, let's see. So, alright, what, what do these fluids do? as far as gameplay goes. Now let's start with lava. This one's pretty easy. In almost every game, lava is just a flashy way to make a hazard. I would reckon you could just as easily replace it with a bed of spikes, carnivorous piranha plants, doom-style green ooze, but isn't toxic sludge just lava of a different color anyway? Uh, especially since heat convection is conveniently left out of every game and movie ever, right? Yeah. Convection and a, a TV trope. Uh, in real life, just being near a lake of lava is enough to kill you. It's hot. Like, really hot. Like, really, really, really friggin' hot. Uh, in fact, let's just get the, the physics disclaimers out of the way right here. Uh, lava is horribly unrealistic and... Bleh, unrealistic in games and movies. Lava is roughly four or five times hotter than your oven on full blast. So, just think about that. Just think about it for a second. Like, imagine a lake made of ovens turned to max, then make it five times hotter. Would you turn your oven up to max and open it and just stand in front of it? How would that feel? Now, imagine that, but multiple times worse. And you can forget swimming in the stuff, or sinking in it. I mean, you may as well fall into a swimming pool filled with solid concrete. Lava is very viscous and thick. Uh, unless you're a robot made of solid steel, you're going to be floating on the surface of a lava pool. So when Gollum fell into the lava of Mount Doom, we should have gotten a splat, not a splash. Thankfully, with some protective clothing and taking advantage of wind direction to reduce the heat, you can get close enough to lava to take samples, but it's not something I'd volunteer for. Like, you couldn't get me out there. I'm like, no, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. You think spiders are nopes? Lava is a nope. I'm not getting close to lava in real life. That is scary stuff. So, lava is a no-go area. You touch it, and you get hurt, or you die instantly. Pretty simple stuff. Um, Minecraft lava is a bit more interesting, as you can pick it up and move it around, and it has flowing mechanics. I've already mentioned a long time ago that in Minecraft, a lava bucket is an extremely powerful weapon. Uh, for the most part, dumping it between you and a melee enemy is an effective way to kill them off at little risk to yourself. A lava also makes attacking from higher up enticing, because not only does it flow downwards and damage enemies, it also lights up an area, preventing enemies from spawning. A sword or bow ain't got nothing on that. I mean, lava is a... It's a flowing light source. Like, it does... In Minecraft, you want to kill the enemy. You want to light up the area. And guess what? Lava kills the enemy and lights up the area. And it moves for you. Like, you can quickly pop in and you stick it down. And it just starts flowing and you can back off and run away. It's like a fire and forget weapon. It's like a Minecraft cruise missile. So what else? Minecraft, um, it also treats lava like a fuel source. In fact, it's the best fuel in the game, making the lakes of liquid fire in the nether uh, great for large automated smelting operations. Uh, it's a fuel, a weapon, a barrier. Pretty cool stuff. Well, hot. <laughs> but not if you have a fire resistance potion then lava becomes a pretty safe place to be, actually. A pool of lava, when you're immune to it, because of a cocoon of, uh, becomes a cocoon of safety in what could otherwise be a pretty dark, crappy, monster-infested in world. Y'all remember... Uh, Y'all remember in my dev comms, as I've gone through areas, I pop a fire resistance potion and just get in the lava, and no other monster can get to you. Mo most monsters can't. Uh, there's some times I've had fire-resistant monsters that could get in the lava with you. But even then, it, they're really slowed down because of how Minecraft treats lava 
as like this sticky liquid that you can swim through, but not very quickly. So even then, you're safe, and it, it lights up everything. So it helps prevent spawning. Uh, just don't let the fire resistance potion run out. So I, I feel pretty safe swimming around in the good old sweet and sour sauce. Uh, let's move on to water now, I guess. I don't have quite as much to say about good old dihydrous monoxide. It serves two main roles in game design. In older games, it was usually a death area. Like, I think the old Sonic games, you fall into the water and it just kills you. Uh, you fall into water and you lose your character, or you die. I think Mario had some pits with water in it. You just die in those. Even though in the next stage you could swim, that doesn't make much sense. And in Ninja Turtles on NES, like you fall in the water and I don't think it killed you. I think it, but it, I mean, it functionally did the same thing. It took you out of the level. It made you have to do the level over again, which is, it may as well have killed you. Even though you're a freaking turtle. Even the angry video game nerd in his long intro is like, why can't a turtle swim? Why can't I land the plane? Well, the water, again, with that water mechanic, it's another no-go zone that could have easily just been spikes or lava or toxic sludge or piranha plants. Like, it's the same mechanic. You go there, you die. It's just got a different appearance, right? It's the same thing. Uh, the other main role that water plays is to allow a new dimension of movement. If you have a 2D character that can jump, and then they start swimming in water, suddenly you have movement in all four directions as far as you want to swim. Uh, in 3D games, water is sort of a... It's like, a, it's like an inverted jetpack. Yeah, that's a, that's a great way to explain it, actually. Uh, rather than flying in the air, you fly under the water. And rather than jetpack fuel, you have a breath meter, right? So it's the same mechanic, but in a different direction and with different graphics. Do I need to explain how realistic water works for this half of the video? I think most of you can guess that shooting a bow while treading water while holding like a torch or something in your other hand is not realistic, but nobody cares because realistically modeled swimming mechanics would be dizzying from a first-person perspective and probably not that fun, so screw it, nobody cares. Uh, for my part, in my maps, I use water for a variety of reasons. It looks nice. A lot of areas make sense to have water in them. You, like, you can't have a swamp without water, or you can't really have a lake without water unless it's a lake of fire or a sea of flame. Uh, 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 okay. um, I try to have the areas in my map either make sense from a geological standpoint or be very obviously like these insane magical areas that just they're magic, they don't have to make sense. Like the last areas of, say, Legendary, like you're going into some twisted realm of insanity that, that doesn't have to make sense anymore. You can have a giant taco dungeon. You can have a giant taco dungeon. It doesn't need to make sense. But with, like, Cenote of the Apprentice and Spellbone Caves, uh, like, it's a, it's a Cenote. It's a real geological formation. So I tried to... It's a big hole in the ground with water in it, right? Or if, like, I try sometimes, you know, have, like, water or lava cutting through, like, eroding, giving the appearance of eroding an area. There's no erosion in normal Minecraft. And, well, well, let you count the Enderman, you know. But, like, I know how rivers work. I have a basic grasp of riparian ecosystems and geomorphology. And, uh, and then, you know, speaking of that, I should probably do more, um... More of those elbow shapes uh, in rivers that actually be pretty cool, like realistically modeled. Do people care about realistically modeled rivers in Minecraft maps? Is that something that people care about? I don't know. Um, but anyway, I need, I'm getting all way off track. All right, all right. So water. I think. Think. Uh, what was I talking about? Okay, so water is also great for putting skeletons in. Because it slows down movement, so the enemies are slow, the player's slow, everything's slow and shitty, and that makes skeletons quite obnoxious to deal with. Like, I think I said, if I ever if I ever stick you in water with skeletons, I basically hate you. It's true, I mean... And the way they bob, like, you're trying to swim towards them, and then you get shot, and then you're trying to swim, and 
God help you if I've given them knockback bows. Like knockback bows, skeletons in water. Just just get out of here. Just just you're screwed. You're dead. That's it. Game over. Over. Game over. Um What else? What else? What else? What else? You also need water to make farming easier. Otherwise you're limited to how much bone meal you can find. It's pretty obvious. Like you need to have a big farm, you need water. Unless it's like melons. Who cares about melons? Melons suck. Uh, I use water to give the player uh, 3D gameplay. I think I talked about because in Minecraft you can't fly. Um, so the only mechanic you can get where you can move in any direction is underwater. So that's kind of cool. And in dungeon, like a, if you consider a dungeon, like we all float and waking up. You have enemies piled up at the surface of the water. They're bobbing up and down on the surface of the water. And if there's, like, creepers and skeletons up there, which I think is the main things, like, if you go up there, you get blown up. And if you get too close to it, you start getting shot at anyway. So you want to stay down under the water. Uh, so by having enemies piled up on the surface of the water to force the player to hop, you force the player to hop from air pocket to air pocket. Uh, I think it resulted in pretty neat gameplay. Um, what else about water? Water elevators, like you can swim up the water. I mean, that's just a fancy ladder, right? Um, it looks cool when you put glowstone under it. I like that. Um, what else, what else, what else? I guess that's it for now. I mean, that's all I can think of right off the top of my head right now. Um... Yeah, anyway, uh, that's about it for now. Thanks for listening to me ramble, and I'll see you next time. Until then, as always, take it easy.